Hi everyone, welcome to our Saturday Fever, your forest market review for 3rd of May 2014. I'm your host, Jack Wong. And let me share with you my screen. And essentially, this is a very uh, new initiative. Some of you might have watched my very first Saturday FIFA Forest Market review last week. I hope that you enjoy the sharing session. I promise I'm not going to do as long as what I did last week. But in any case, I have to show you the disclaimer. Notice that I'm only giving you educational content. I'm not here giving you any form of investment advice. What we are doing here is 100% education. So before we look at the charts, I mean, I do have a few opportunities. Not a lot. The market has been pretty quiet since last week. We had a very pretty quiet week in forest market. Well, guess what? This week is also quite quiet. So let's look at the announcement for next week. We are returning to hope that there will be some volatility in the forest market. Now, there are a couple of very important pieces of news that is coming out. Number one, in Australia, there will be the RBA interest rate announcement on Tuesday afternoon, 12.30 p.m. Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysian time. And then for Thursday night, we have got the ECB interest rate announcement, but the more important one is really Mario Draghi's press conference at 8.30 Thursday evening, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysian time. So these two are key as far as the central bank's announcements are concerned. We do have Bank of England's announcement, but usually this is a non-event. The key one will always be the MPC minutes in two weeks' time. And then we have all the commodity currencies, Australia, uh, Aussie dollars, I mean Kiwi and CAT, all have non-farm payrolls or payroll data coming out. Uh, focus, of course, is the labor market for Australia as well as Canada. Okay, these two are key. At the same time, uh, Stephen Polos, the governor or uh, governor of Bank of Canada, made two speeches last week, and he said he's paying attention to the trade balance. So yes, I didn't highlight this, however, because of Polos' statement. Um, Tuesday, 8.30 Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia time, there will be the Canadian trade balance. So I guess this will also be quite important too for trading cat. Okay, so for China, we have got the HSBC flash manufacturing PMI final reading, followed by the inflation rate and also the trade balance. Okay, so that's the news from China. Okay, so I consider a heavy reporting week. Some of you know that the non-farm payroll from United States last night, 6.3% um, unemployment rate, and also 288,000 non-farm payroll. Well, these are very promising numbers. However, Janet Yellen will explain this in the next week because she is going to talk about the testimony. The testimony will, be, will take place at 10 p.m. Wednesday night, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysian time. So let's see what she says. In the meantime, the, the, the market wasn't pretty happy with the result. Why? Well, um, number one, the participation ratio is only 62.8%. It is quite low. Two, the average hourly earnings is flat. So if the market chose to focus on these two numbers, not 288,000 on farm payroll and the 6.3% unemployment rate. So let's see what happens. Okay, so let's look at the chart, and I would like to start with the U.S. majors. I'm going to show all the charts here. I just want to flash a few important ones. Um, the euro-dollar pair, uh, Drahi, is going to speak on Thursday night. So I'm not going to trade euro-dollar um, on the daily chart. You can see that euro-dollar, there's a very strong price rejection at 1.38 level. So yesterday, the non-farm payroll, the low was 1.38, so it was a super nice round number. But throughout the day, it came back and closed almost the opening price. So now I'm looking at a possible break of 1.3890, okay? However, the recent high was only 1.9647. So I'm not so keen to trade because the risk and risk reward ratio is not in my favor. So this is just a pair for me to watch because if you have gone in at 1.3790 to 1.38, you have made that money. If you haven't gone into that, well, you are just watching. Okay? So on record, I didn't have any trade because I was teaching on those days. I missed the, I missed the trade as well. 
Whereas for British Pound, finally we got a very nice entry because you can see that the 1.6822, which was the previous four-year high, has been tested as a resistance on Wednesday and also Friday. So if you missed your boat on Wednesday, you could still enter the trade at 1.6822, okay, on when? On Friday. So, so that is called really, really be patient. And once you enter into guess what is your risk reward ratio super huge. Now 1.7042 is the previous swing high that was uh, when was that? You can see that was dun 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 back in the um, 2009, okay, 2009 August, okay. So I'm looking at this as the next target. Well, this is a super super nice patience. Patience actually pay, okay. For people who are trading Aussie dollars, Aussie dollars actually has a, a pin bar on Friday. So this is a pin bar. So let me just mark it down first. Okay, forgot to mention that. So the pin bar respected the 9226 level, and more importantly, now the previous swing high was 969460. So there's still quite decent 200 pips of move from this trade. So if you are interested, well, Monday tomorrow when the market opens, you can actually test it out put a very small position because you know what Tuesday there will be I'll be an interest rate announcement also there will be um, the unemployment rate number so anything can change the outlook so we are talking about technical but you do need to understand that the fundamental can violate all the technical setup so I'm not going to put a very big position if I were to trade this position okay so for Kiwi is the one that I like more Okay, so the key we weapon was that on Friday on Monday, as you can see, the 8515 level has been respected nice. So that is a very nice four strict stay of up. Thank you very much. Waiting for that for a very long time. You see, when I was looking at this pair, it was coming down, 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 but refused to come down to this level. It's really like fishing. Okay, but finally, Monday. Actually, not Monday, sorry, Tuesday, you came down and tested it yeah. Very nice. Okay. For CAT, dollar CAT, I like to trade the weekly because since four weeks ago, there was a weekly pin bar. So I am I have already put a position there waiting for dollar CAT to go up. Now, the problem here is that Stephen Polo said she has no idea what's the outlook of CAT because it can go up, it can go down. It depends on the numbers. So technically, I have a position. Fundamentally speaking, I don't know whether it is in my favor, but in this trade, because I enter using technical, so I use the technical to exit. So which means that if I was stop out below this level of 1.0909, 1 so be it. I mean, that, that, that's what trading is all about. Okay, so it can be wrong, or I can be wrong. Okay, for dollar yen, well, people who are very bullish on dollar yen because of the superb non-farm payroll, please understand that the market has chosen to read the average hourly earnings as well as the, uh, what do you call this, the participation ratio. So therefore, dollar yen reversed and that becomes a long tail. Now, this long tail, I'm not very kind, I'm not in kind of doing anything. It is a pin bar, but that said, it is in the debt in the dead man's land or dead man's song. Because if you, I mark, you can see I mark the resistance at 103.24, the support at 101.31, so it's actually in the middle. So what does it mean? Nothing. I can't do anything when the price is in between of the support and resistance zone. Risk and rewards is not in my, in my, in my favor. Okay, so it's good to watch, but nothing can be done. So okay, I also look at some of the Yen crosses and found out that pound yen. I'm waiting for this. This is in a very nice triangular pattern that is on a weekly chart. So you find that how come we cannot trade pound yen on daily chart? Well, the weekly chart is telling you that I am in a triangular pattern. Okay, if that's the case, then what can you trade? So wait for the breakout. Same same thing for euro yen in a pet consolidation. So weekly chart says this is a consolidation, so what can you do? So again, you can bet, I mean on daily chart, but what what is the what is the what are the odds? Is it in your favor? So go figure. Now Aussie Yen, 
on the other hand, is not doing anything. So this is a weekly chart. So you can see that OCN has been very quiet within the last four weeks. That being said, because it is a weekly chart, it means that this small range is already 100 and let me see, 170 pips. Okay, but seriously, I want OCN to break out of this range, and it is either up or down. Uh, chances are going down. So when it goes down, then yes, there could be opportunity for me. So this is a pair that I'm watching. Nothing happens yet. Kiwi Yen, however, has something happened already. So if you are trading on a weekly chart basis, well, you can see there's a nice bounce off at 97.21. Go into the daily chart. What you could have done is the price at this level, well, you can see that, well, either Kiwi Dollar or Kiwi Yen, you will have made some money. But that being said, I personally like Kiwi Dollar because dollar is weak, okay? So this is now um, two, 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 uh, it's already gone. So I, if, I, if, you want to, if you want to look for this trade, then you need the price action, the price to come back around 87.21 before you buy again. But it's a bit late already because it has been away from 120 pips. Okay, cat yen. Uh, cat yen is actually doing nothing on a weekly chart. You can see cat yen. I'm waiting for cat yen to give me some price action break. Okay, right now it is also like OCN in a four in a few weeks gyration. So nothing much on cat yen. So I'm waiting for that. Okay, so these are all the things happen. Crosses. So in terms of the exotic crosses, I have got two which I would like to point out. One is the my favorite Aussie cat. Well. Uh, I was wrong first time. Um, Aussie, Aussie cat failed to actually sustain at this level. It was the previous level I was looking at, unfortunately. Um, Aussie cat actually came down. So, yep, no problem. Well, if I'm wrong, so be it. But now Aussie cat has another chance of going in. Uh, the reason is that there is a price action. So, south of like 10149 or around that level. It's a very nice support, so that might be a reason to get in. And if the resistance of 103 103.42 is the target, this is a very nice high reward to risk ratio trade. Okay, so I'm looking for this too. Okay, so that's actually all I was I'm I'm looking at. So personally, if you if you are looking at um, the sum up the opportunities. Aussie cat is the one that I'm checking out. At the same time, pound dollar, pound dollar is a very nice one to get out to get to get in. Okay, euro euro dollar, nothing much you can do. Uh, dollar cat, I'm still waiting for opportunity. Okay, so these are all the opportunities I'm looking for. So basically, use money management rule and make sure that you have a stop loss in place all the time. So people ask, how do I know all these fundamentals analysis? Well, I've been doing this for so long, and essentially, if you would like to tap my brain, you can actually come to empowerrangers.net, check out our weekly forest tactics review, and send me an email so that you are able to um, enjoy a very, very unreasonable price, unreasonable to me, but reasonable to you, uh, to tap on my fundamental analysis. Okay, so that's all for this week, folks. If you have any questions, comments, send me an email. Also, check out my membership site, onlinetradingforprofits.com, where you can actually mingle with uh, over hundreds of members about trading questions, trading support from them. Okay, so that's all for this week, folks. Thank you very much. So have a good and safe trading week. Jack Wong here. I will see you next week. Saturday Fever, your Forest Market Review. Bye-bye.